Hello, and welcome to Diva Talks Live. I am your host, the Diva. And I have a very special guest in the audience with me today. But before I get to my special guest, um, as most of you know, I lost a very, very good friend, um, Kathy Toller. Um, we all know her as Kat. Um, she received her wings on yesterday. And, um, man, she's definitely going to be missed. So I, I definitely couldn't start the show without saying rest in peace, Kat. And thank you for the good times. And we all know that you are with your baby girl. And that's where you've been wanting to be. So thank you, Lord. Take care of us down here because we're missing a huge part of our heart. So if I could just have a second, just a moment of silence to remember our very, very good friend, Kathy Toller, a.k.a. Kat. Thank you. Rest in peace, Kat. So today I have none other than my very, very good friend. I call her Shan Shan, but her name is Shannon Spurl. She's an author. She is a publisher. She has her own publishing company. She is a wife. She is a mother. Uh, we work together at Ingram Micro. It's just a whole bunch of hats that Shannon wears. Shannon, welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing good. Good. Doing good. Good, good, good. good. You know, um, I, I mentioned on a stat that I put up on Facebook earlier that uh, it was ironic that you and I were on the phone yesterday when uh, I received the news of Kat's passing. And you immediately went into prayer for not only me, but for Kat's family and her friends. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to publicly thank you for that as well. Thank you so much because we need friends that pray for us. So thank you. Absolutely. 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 Shannon, how long have we been knowing each other? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> well, well, I've been, been at Ingram Micro for 23, 23 years. Okay. And, and when, when I, started, I started, I met, I met you. you. Mm -hmm. um, so we've so known each other 23 years, years but I think our relationship, relationship has grown over the last 10, 10 years. years. That, that's, that is exactly what I had written down. Everything that you just said is exactly what I had. Okay. I, I, I remember um, when our relationship really grew, and we're going to talk more in, about that and, and how you have just flourished when you came over when you wrote your first book. But before mm -hmm. we get into that, Shannon, tell us a little bit about you, your family, and uh, things of that nature. Um, well, I'm married. My husband is speaking in what scroll. We've been married next, next year for 35 years. Oh my goodness. We have three boys. Um, my, my oldest, oldest is 36. I always got to think. <laughs> the oldest is 36. Brian would have been 34. And my youngest is 30. I hope you got that right. <laughs> It's somewhere close around there. I'm just wondering, how do you have 30-year-olds and you're 30 yourself? Well, thank, thank you. You're but, welcome. Um, I'm 57 <laughs> years old. Okay, tell your age. It's good. Proud of it. Proud of it. <laughs> awesome. I, I know magic. It, you know, besides being at work, when I see you... We definitely see magic. He is your number one fan, your number yes. one supporter. And, and, and I love that. You mentioned that, you know, you had three sons and you mentioned Brian um, would have been. And, you know, I know Brian and I knew Brian when we worked together and Brian was in a league of his own. And he yes, is he miss, 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 thoroughly miss. Tell us a little bit about that. Let's talk about that while we're on it. Um. Brian was killed in a car accident um, October 4th, 2013. Got a call about 5.30 in the morning. We're told to come to Kenmore Mercy. They didn't tell us what for. They just said, make sure you come right away. But I can tell you this, me and my husband, we knew. We didn't speak it to one another. But in our heart, we knew. Um, got to the hospital, make a long story short. Um, doctor explained to us that young lady was driving. The weather was bad. Wind up running into a cement pole. 
Um, there were four people in the car. My son was the only one that was killed. Um, he didn't have his seatbelt on, so the impact broke his neck. So that was 2013, seven years ago. I can't even begin to tell you the emotions, the hurt, the pain. Um, I often tell people, and I've said this to Latanya, is you don't understand that pain unless you've been there. And you don't want anyone to go through that because losing a child is just so different from any other loss. But um, I started a support group. Um, a lot of things happened since then. My life is totally not the same it was before that day. And that's what I was going to get into. Um, I wanted to start that, um, start out with that because you have done so much to help others um, who are in the same boat as you mm -hmm. and your husband, um, being in pain, but you started a support group. Tell us a little bit about the support group. When I started the support group, it was under the umbrella of a national organization. It was about two months after he passed. I applied for this to start the chapter. Um, they first told me no, because they like the person that starts a chapter for it to at least have been a year. So you've gone through your grieving and you're able to help others. Well, she told me to write a letter and explain why I thought that I was ready. So I did. Evidently, what I wrote impressed her, and she approved our application. We, we did that for, I think it was close to a year and a half to two years. Um, but we didn't get a lot of people that came in. Now, what was the name of it, Shannon? It was the bereaved parents of the USA. Right. And, 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 and I know that you were going to talk a little bit about, you know, not having a lot of people to come in. I work closely with you um, on a few yeah. things. Um, some of it being um, you started a banquet that you would give every yeah. year in his honor. And those were um, successful. People did come out to those. But I know you were mentioning um, it was hard to get people to come out to meetings. Why do you think that was? I think that from what my experience in dealing with the parents that did come, it was hard for them to open up in groups. Um, I think in our culture, African American community, we don't talk about it. And we don't talk about it enough. Um, after I stopped doing it, 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 I still wanted to have something. So I moved it to an online support group and more people are involved than well, when I had it in person. Now that's the uh, parents pushing past their grief? Yes. yes. Okay, so yes. That, that's, um, that's a, a blog that you have, right? Or is it just, is it YouTube? It is, well, so there's a Facebook group where all the parents are a part, it's a private group, mm -hmm. but I also, we have a Facebook channel, we have a YouTube channel and a blog. And we just discuss topics, working through grief. Um, we had a guest recently who talked about pregnancy and infant loss. So it's just to educate people about the grief process. Now, you, you taught parents pushing past their grief. I remember the last group, um, you had invited um, siblings, um, grandparents. Mm -hmm. Is that the same with the parents pushing past or is it just parents? It's grandparents and siblings. Okay, okay, so that's that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Parents pushing past the grief. Kudos to you because that that is that is that's got to be a hard hard pill to swallow because you're helping others and you you're going through the same thing. But I guess if you have a community a community to surround themselves around each other, then it makes it easier for everybody. So I yeah. applaud you and Magic um, mm -hmm. for, for for what you're doing. Um, rest in peace, Brian. If you if you met Brian, you know how they usually say, either you're gonna um, like the person or you're not. You, you had no choice. You were going to love Brian regardless. He was unapologetically great in his own way. So yes, rest in peace, Brian. I love me some Brian. Thank you for sharing your story, Shannon. I I I 
I, I know the story and it gets to me every single time. Yeah. But something that we want to move forward on is these books. How many books have you written, Shannon? I am currently working on book number 11. Now, let me tell you, most of you may or may not know this when um, you wrote your first book in when, uh, 2016? 2010. 2010. 2010. Okay. And what was the name of that book? My Reflection, My reflection in the mirror. mirror. Okay. So let me tell you just a backstory about that. Do you remember coming over to my desk and you were talking about writing a book and you were kind of unsure if you wanted to write this book? And I'm like, well, why? Just write it. He was like, I'm not sure if people want to hear my story. And um, you wrote the book. You had me read it. It knocked me off my feet. And I'm not just saying that it, because your story was a story that I had no idea. The things that you went through, the things that you were going through. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But then you took that book and you turned it into another book or you collaborated two books. And, and what did you, I have a book here and I know this is no longer on the shelves, but My Reflection in the Mirror and the Shattered, shattered Mirror Picking Up the Pieces. I brought this because you autographed it for me. And uh, <laughs> talk a little bit about this and why you put two books into one. Well, I initially... I initially when I was writing, my first book was actually going to be a fiction. It was going to be a murder mystery. Um, I was at a conference um, with my church, and one of the guest ministers had came up to me and said, uh, you're writing a book, aren't you? So I was kind of like, whoa, how did he know this? So I said, yes, I am. He says, what I need you to do is go home you need to tear that book up and tell your story. So initially, of course, I was kind of offended. Like, tear my book up? What are you talking about? Right. So I thought about it, and actually I started praying on it, and I understood what he meant. I had a story to tell. And of course, that's when I came to you because I went through a lot. And it was some real personal stuff, and I was like, should I be sharing it? And I prayed on it, and I realized that there's another young girl out there who has gone through some of the similar things that I've gone through and may be feeling hopeless. So if I share my story, or if I give my testimony, that'll give that person some hope. So that was the purpose of me writing the first book, to provide um, encouragement to other young women. Well, of course, fast forward, Brian passes away. So in my mind, my story continued. So I needed to tell that part of the story. So that was the remake of the book because I wanted to include how I got through that process also. Wow, amazing, amazing. Well, now, <laughs> um, I so you also came over to my desk and asked me, um, to read a couple of books and then you turned it into, you should be my literary agent. And I'm like, well, what is that? <laughs> and um, after you explained to me what it was, I said, absolutely not. And uh, you said, absolutely yes. And uh, I became her literary agent. Yeah. So I'll tell you, Shannon starts writing these books and I'm reading these books and I'm like, who is this person? Because <laughs> this was a total different person. Now, these, these were fiction, but the other ones that you started writing, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm telling you guys, these stories, I'm and then, then I begin to fear Shannon because these books that she started <laughs> writing, I'm like, who is this person? And it would have you on the edge of your seat. And I found myself starting to read the book and never putting the book down. I would go on lunch, I would read it in my car, and not just because I was her literary agent, and if you know what a literary agent is, you would know that you, you know, read the book and things of that nature, but because the book was so darn good, and I would literally finish a book in a day or two, and I'm like, Shannon, this is so good, where are you coming up? It, it was almost like um, the murder she wrote, you know, those types of things, good enough to be a TV show. But it scared me because I'm like, who is this person writing these books? <laughs> but uh, Shannon, talk about some of these books and when you came up with, you know, without giving your secrets away, talk about some of these books and name some of those books that you wrote and why you wrote those. Okay, okay so, so the, the first, first book was Forbidden to Tell, 
Secrets Can Kill, um, Her Vanishing Heart, um, Guilty Lies and Innocent Truth. I'm trying to remember them off the top of my head. <laughs> but you know what? I've always been a creative person and I've always, I love to write. And I love mysteries. I love sci-fi, horror. And I'm a huge Stephen King fan. So I literally, I know like a lot of people, they have a process when they write. They do their outline. I mean, there's, they go through a whole process. Me, I write differently. I sit there and I just put myself in the story and it just comes and I just write. And yeah, you were, cause you were plopping those books out one after the other. You're like, I have another one. You're done with that one. You have another one. I'm like, where are these stories coming from? And they were all so good. And they had a twist to it that you would think you could figure out. And you like, oh, I know where this is going. And then when you finish, you're like, oh my goodness. I had no idea that this is how the story was going to end. And so, I mean, it, it was awesome. So I remember you did when we had your first book signing. I believe that was September 17th, 2016. Oh, you oh, got a good memory. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, you have to do homework, too. We had, we had your very first book signing. So, that story with Shannon. Shannon is the type of person that stays in the background. So, you really don't know all her capabilities because she just, she stays in the background. And so, once she started to come out, I was like, who is that person? Um, because not only did she start writing books, she was like, you know what? I'm going to have my own publishing company. And... Bam, you have your own publishing company. What's the name of your publishing company? And let's talk about that. It's, it's SMS, SMS Write On Publishing, publishing and Write On is W R I T E. Hot. And it's an LLC. LLC. And, and I believe your first, you published a, a, a little girl's book, correct? No, no we were supposed, supposed to. to. Okay. And that fell through. Okay. Uh, okay. My, first my first client was a young man, and, and he, he wrote. wrote um, and the funny thing about it is when he came to me, it's a book about vampire. And I looked at him like, okay, I'm going to take him on. We did the contract. But I'm saying to myself, this young man is not going to write a story that, you know, is going to be intriguing. Oh, my God. This book was phenomenal. I, I read it like twice. It was so good. So he was my first client. Um... I worked, I worked with, with another lady, lady just recently. Um, her name is Marilyn Foote. She wrote an autobiography. It's called The Ten, Ten Box Baby. Um, and that was a long process because she took ill. But um, I was really excited about that. Um, and that's it. I've helped a few people through the publishing process. But from the beginning to the end, I just had the two clients. Now, what do you suggest to someone who is thinking about writing a book and, and coming to you to have the book published? What, what are uh, maybe the first three steps that they should look into? So I tell everyone that comes to me, number one, I ask them, where are they at in the process? And when they tell me my book is complete, my next question is, we need to get it edited. You know, you get some people say, oh, I've edited. My auntie read it. She proofread it. But I let them know that you cannot do the, the, the biggest thing you need to do is get your book professionally edited. Your book is a reflection of you. You want it to be error free. I've picked up books that are littered with errors everywhere. Good story, but I can't get past it because every other page there's an error. Right. So it's very important that you have a clean book. And I tell them, editing is the most expensive part of the process. So save your money <laughs> because you need to have it edited. I also, I am not like a standard publishing company. I try to educate my customers. Awesome. That's good. That's good. I... Give them an option because there's some customers that just say, I don't want any parts of it. Just publish my book. But I offer them, I will educate you on how to do this yourself. It's 
process, but I had to learn it. And that's, so I'll tell you this. My first book, I made a ton of mistakes. Number one, I didn't get it professionally edited. I had to pull it off the shelf. I had to re redo it, get it edited, and I revamped the cover. All of this, I learned along the way. I did my research. I talked to people that's already in the industry and I learned and I taught myself. And I thought that if somebody else is going through this, I want them to know because there's companies out here that I rip you off. I've taken on customers that have gone through and lost money because they were promised something that they didn't get. So I want them to know the step-by-step -step what I'm doing. That's good. That's great. So where can they find your books, Shannon? On my website or on Amazon. My website is authorshannonsproul.com. And Sproul is spelled S-P-R-U-I-L-L. All righty. All right. So I, I want you to tell us a fun fact about you. I'm going to see if it's going to be something that I have written down. Tell us a fun fact about you that people will be very surprised to know. Okay. I'll tell you and show you. How's that? Okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> I, I think it's what I have written down. <laughs> I am the biggest wrestling fan. Yes, that's exactly what I have written down. <laughs> and here's my collection of belts. <laughs> oh my. I could not believe yes. that. Yes. Yes. You see that? Do you see that? Do you guys see that? <laughs> Before COVID, Shannon and her husband would be downtown at the, uh, the arena for these wrestling matches. I, I had no idea. I'm like, are you serious? So who, who is your favorite wrestler? <laughs> Roman Reigns. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna ask you, and I don't want to spoil it for the for the the wrestling people and everybody that love it. You know it's fake, right? Uh uh. <laughs> no, okay. we can't debate that now. But we'll, but it's we'll, not leave, fake. we'll leave that right there. You continue to enjoy what it is. I I watch Ratchet TV, so you do what you do, and I'll continue doing what I do. But I do know that 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 is um. Uh, something that was a fun fact, and I'm glad that I was correct on that. Um, before we end, Shannon, um, you received an award, um, an awesome award, Women Touching the World Award. How did you feel about that? I was, I was very, very humble. humble. I, didn't I didn't expect, expect it. it. It's, it's nice, nice to be to recognized. recognized. But like but you like said, I, I do like being in the background and uh, a little a little fact that I'll share with your audience is that I became the person I am because of Latanya and when I say the person that I am I've come out of my shell because of Latanya um, I'm the type of person I'll do all the computer stuff in the background video whatever but get in front of a camera I prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am so happy that you are um, out of your shell and you're remaining out of your shell because you are an awesome person that everyone should have the opportunity to get to know and to meet. And, and these books are just awesome. Um, to be on your 11th book, that's nothing but a blessing. Um, but I, I, I cannot end this um, interview without talking about your church family. Yes. Church. Yes, yes I, I, I belong to Faith Missionary Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. I've lost I've count of how long I've been there. there. <laughs> but um, my, my, my pastor, pastor is Pastor James, James Barr Banks II. The second. And you hit it right on the head. It's a family. I've, I've, I've never, never been, been to a church, church where I was so welcome. So um, I teach I Sunday school. I convene the women's ministry. And... It has helped me grow so much. I've learned so much. And my relationship with God is just at a whole new level. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. We we love Pastor Base and, and everyone yes. over there at Faith. That's our they are our neighbors right down the street on yes. Humboldt. Um Shannon, this has been awesome. Yes. Awesome, yes. awesome, awesome. You know we could have talked for like an hour. Right, two right, hours. right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and and you know, but I the, the main important thing is I wanted to um let everybody know what a great author you are and, and please support Shannon. Um Amazon or, or, or go to um, her page and you know books that she has written these are some great reads trust me when I tell you some great reads um, Shannon I do appreciate you spending some time with me tonight I love you I love you like a sister I'm going to continue you. to love you I'm going to back you I'm going to be right there for you everything except for wrestling but uh, I'm gonna I get you there back you. I will <laughs> back you keep doing what you're doing Thank keep you. letting God work and keep following his steps because you are amazing. And Thank you. Um, I'm just blessed that you took time tonight to be on the Diva Talk show. I appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Before I go, um, once again, I, I'd just like to say rest in peace to Kat. And I want to thank everybody for showing love. Uh, Kat touched so many people. And um, it's like I said, it's just ironic that we had Shannon on the show today because the way that I felt about Kat is the way that I felt about her son, Brian. And um, both tragic deaths. So that the season that we're living in, this COVID season, it, it, it just reminds you that you have to tell your loved ones that you love them. I don't care if it's a text, if it's a phone call, if it's a genie in a bottle. Get to them and let them know that you love them because you never know the day, the time, the hour. Only God knows. So while you still have the opportunity, do so. Do so. Mend those broken whatever it is that you have. It's not even worth it. Live your best life. And in closing, I have to have the Bills. Go Bills. They did their thing last night. Um, and um, we're super proud of the Buffalo Bills. As always, Thursday night, you can catch Corey and I on 45s on the 8. But if nothing else, if nothing else, make sure that you're happy. Because if you're not, you can't make anyone else happy. So find your happy space. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope to see you next week. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Good night.